There is a hidden battle cruiser in Star Wars Empire at War Fall of the Republic which you might not know about. This isn't simply a little fighter or frigate. This is an entire battle cruiser that has an impressive armament that ranges from iron cannons, laser cannons and concussion missiles. And the most interesting part is you're unable to build or use this ship in both galactic conquest and skirmish modes. Reasons why and how powerful this ship really is in today's video video. So here we are in the fleet crater mode for Fall of the Republic and as soon as you spawn in we see these three icons here, one for Confederacy, one for Galactic Republic and another for Special Units. And here if we click the Special Units one we can see the tag Battlecruiser and we can actually build it and I've got one right here. So just being able to use the ship is already quite the rare occurrence. You can see these ships in the Galactic Conquest mode, however you can't actually use them in any capacity. The enemy can use them, you can fight against them, but you can't capture them or build them yourself. And in skirmish mode, you can't actually build them on any faction whatsoever, whether you're the Galactic Republic or Confederacy. Even if you capture a hero station, it is not available for you to build there either. So first off, let's take a look at what the description says about this ship. So if I go ahead and highlight it, it says here, the TAG battle cruisers commissioned by the TAG company to defend their holdings from other corporations in a dangerous galaxy. While they are property of the House of Tag, they are often offered to assist the Galactic Empire on missions the House saw achieving mutually beneficial results. As an early demonstration ship, they are notably outdated compared to Imperial era vessels. So that is the description of the ship and the stats are as follows. The hull comes in at 26,200, the shields come in at 25,000 and the fighters spawn 5 times at a time, 10 times over, bombers spawn once, 3 times over and then it also comes with 4 heavy turbo lasers, 12 medium dual turbo lasers, 4 heavy iron cannons, 8 heavy laser cannons and 8 concussion missiles. So, just from the description alone, we've got a lot of turbo laser damage for attacking specific hard points on ships. Once we've taken down those shields, the concussion missiles really hone in on that as well because concussion missiles definitely do quite a lot of damage at long range as well. But it isn't just turbo lasers, there is also iron cannons spread across uh, the hull here. If we can find some, there's some heavy iron cannon batteries right there and there and another one there and there. I believe there's only four on this ship. So whilst there's not a lot of iron cannon damage, the heavy ones on a much closer range can uh, do a lot of damage to other big ships. Um, but in terms of that, that's all it has. In For hull and shields, very impressive for a ship of this size. But ultimately, there isn't a lot of hard points here. Um, so if I go ahead and actually bring in a stronger ship, if you will, um, like the Praetor, uh, the Praetor Mark 1 Battlecruiser. It's a relatively similar sized ship um, and stats. Uh, but as you can see here, it's actually got a lot more hard points spread across its hull. Uh, it's got a lot more hull in, uh, and shields as well. And overall, just a lot more turbo lasers compared to the TAG Battlecruiser. So the description of it being a demonstration ship really shows here because it wouldn't ha you know, be able to fight very well against the Praetor Mark 1. Maybe it will. We'll find out in today's video. So what we're going to be doing first is we're going to be going to put, pit this ship against um, a Luke Hulk uh, warship. Uh, and then begin to scale up depending on how strong the ship is. So we'll start with the Luca Hulk first, I think. Or should we go with a Mark II? No, 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 no. We'll, we'll go with the... Uh, let's go actually with the Battle Carrier first. Just because it's two different types of ship. It's most likely going to win against it. And we'll scale up from there. But yeah, so that is a little introduction to the Tag Battle Cruiser. And I'll explain why you can't actually build it a little bit later on. So let's go ahead and spawn in our Luke Hulk battle carrier for our first fight with the tag battle cruiser and uh, go ahead and start that battle cam to activate the battle. 
So let's go ahead and get our... Wow, that bomber <laughs> got annihilated immediately. I don't know if you just saw that there. We, we only spawned one bomber. Uh, and um, and it got eliminated immediately, I think. Oh, wait, no, no. That's our bomber. So what was that one that we just got destroyed? That's interesting. It's this one here. Um, that is a cloak-shaped squadron. Okay, so that's just a standard fighter. I see. So all of a sudden, our fighters just get wiped really fast there. I don't know if you saw that, but the bombers and the fighters didn't stand a chance. I want to actually pause and take a look at what they're spawning. So we got the Warpod Squadron, and these aren't like these, this is from a minor faction, so it isn't Galactic Republic or the uh, Confederacy here. But uh, yeah, it seems like they get really like knocked out pretty quickly. But this this is quite an effective bomber with its fighter laser, proton rocket, and concussion bomb. So in groups, that is going to be really effective. But the fighters seem to like not stand a chance. But again, we are going against the Luka Holt Battle Carrier, which, as you can see here, is spawning a lot of fighters and a lot of bombers in one go. Uh, but what's really interesting is that like the Tag Battle Cruiser actually meets it in some way in terms of fighters. Uh, not so much for bombers. As we can see here that it's actually the, the Battle Cruiser spawning six bombers. That is a lot for a, uh, a capital ship here. Um, but uh, yeah, the fighters seem to really struggle here. They're a bit weaker, I think, than the, the, the more um, main factions. But in terms of damage output, like I said, those iron cannons are going to work. Those heavy iron cannons uh, are slower and, and, and uh, are going to more likely miss on smaller um, ships. But the Luke Holt, pretty big, pretty big girl. So I think it's not going to have any issue trying to take down those shields. But that being said, the fighters are really giving it a hard time and we're already losing out on our shields here with the uh the tag battle cruiser against the luke holt battle carrier which is a bit of a surprise i thought it would definitely do a lot more damage but that's just the shields and i think the luke hulk has more shields than hull uh and the, the the tag battle cruiser has more hull than shields so maybe things will change in the second half of the battle we'll just have to wait and see um the fighters i mean they're doing we, we we're replenishing them enough so but they'll eventually this ship is going to run out of fighters to spawn especially bombers so uh that's a bit worrying to say the least but anyway why can't we build this ship in fall of the republic why can't we build it in skirmish galactic conquest uh but we can see it epically being used by the ai well it's a part of the minor faction in fall of the republic and they're, they are on independent forces planets and or, or in specific much smaller uh, factions across the map uh, there's no guarantee that it will be spawned on a particular planet so if you're trying to hunt one down you might be unlucky enough to not even encounter it in your entire uh, galactic conquest which is quite a shame because i think this is a really beautiful ship uh, especially the model like uh when I first saw it, I thought it was really formidable and, and quite powerful. But in these examples, I don't think it's doing that well compared to the... Uh, and I, and I, I, may I say, this is a battle carrier, right? So, like, I'm surprised that, it, that the hull of this ship isn't taking more hits. But oh, I digress. Anyway, so, yeah, these can be used by AI. And you can't use capturing vessels to uh, take control of this ship, unfortunately. Uh, although I might be wrong on that. If any of the uh, FOTR devs are watching this video, let me know in the comments. Or even if you've actually captured one yourself, let me know. But I'm pretty certain that you can't capture it considering its size. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, it's just a shame that you can't really get to use it in Fall of Republic. But to be honest, now that I'm seeing the performance of it, yeah, I mean, you may as well just build a Praetor because this thing is definitely not going to be able to take on a praetor i think at least i think it'll do some damage now that we look at this the health of either one it's not far behind in terms of hull i think we are still going to lose just because the fighters are going to overwhelm us as we start running out of fighters to spawn from our uh, carriers uh, or, or our fighter base sorry but in terms of uh, the concussion missiles and the heavy turbo lasers it's still packing quite a punch against this luke holt battle carrier uh, and the Luke Holt Battle Carrier has like 15 medium turbo lasers and 26 heavy dual laser cannons and 18 medium quad laser cannons. So it it itself has quite a lot of hull damage to serve, although it does more better. It, it, it performs better against smaller ships uh, because of the medium um, 
turbo lasers there uh, because it has a bit more accuracy than the heavy ones. The Tag Battle Cruiser uh, does have a lot of heavy laser cannons, turbo lasers, and then obviously the concussion missiles. But um, there is 12 medium dual, dual turbo lasers as well, which is quite impressive. But, you know, for what it looks like, this, this ship, uh, in my opinion, I think overall... Uh, can deal damage to ships equal to its size, uh, but stri but is probably better to use uh, against um, smaller ships. You know, which you know, obviously every single bigger ship is going to do better against um, you know, you know, like frigates and 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 so on, or, and small dreadnoughts, or whatever. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, I mean, hmm, it really comes down to like the price because whilst I'm not sure if this is like, I mean, this is kind of like public knowledge, but this will be coming in the next Thrawn uh, Revenge update. Obviously, it's a whole new ship. We we're going to be expecting it in Thrawn's Revenge. And I do believe you can actually build it or use it in a specific faction in uh, that mod whenever that update comes out. Uh, so maybe it will just come down to the price. Maybe the Tag Battle Cruiser will be a cheaper minor faction ship to build and that is where the benefits of this ship will come because if it is going to be a lot cheaper than a praetor then great you know we can definitely see the the benefits of that ship um but there we go we lost our first battle against the luke Holt battle carrier we did do quite a lot we stripped the shield took its hull down by one quarter but uh i think the fighters and bombers here especially the six bombers in one go uh, from the Luke Holt Battle Carrier is quite formidable. That's going to do a lot of damage to big ships. So maybe it'll do better against the uh, warship version of the Luke Hulk. That we'll find out in just a few seconds. So here we are with the uh, Luke Hulk war warship. And let's jump into the battle. And uh, I think now that I look at it, uh, because there's not as many fighters and bombers to worry about here, Let's actually go ahead and get these fighters on these bombers. Let's mi let's really micromanage this. Let we go for our second fighter. Go for that bomber. And then uh, that squadron here. Go for that bomber. Okay, so hopefully we can get those bombers off our backs. Seems like these bombers can't even get off the ground. Uh, off the uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, battle carrier. Or, or uh, sorry, uh, the, the the hangar bay. I can't even get out of the hangar bay and to the uh, Luke Hulk in time, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, so let's have a look here for the Luke Hulk warship. It spawns seven fighters and six bombers. Still quite a lot. Now that I think about it, still quite a lot. However, the shields and hull are a lot less than the tag battle cruiser. So maybe we will have a better time at actually taking this down because the, the the previous match, the reason we lost that was because the carrier loadout, it had more hull and shields. It was able to just wait it out, like stall the battle while the bombers did the job for it, really. That's where, that's where the damage is coming from. Here, the warship is having to do more of the damage. Uh, and it's got a lot less hard points, as you can see here. Like, it's not surrounded by so much. But it is equipped with one medium turbo laser, four heavy laser cannons, two medium quad laser cannons, and 14 medium quad laser cannons. So no iron cannons here whatsoever. So it's really going to struggle. And, and here we're actually seeing it already. The, the tag battle cruiser is already stripping the shields of this Luke Holt warship. And I think this is because, like I said, not having to worry so much about fighters. And, and obviously the ship has a lot less hull and shields. And it relies a lot more on its uh, uh, quad laser cannons. Uh, uh, and wait, what is it? The two medium quad laser cannons, 14 medium quad laser cannons. So they're both the same. Oh, but they just fire. One fires more frequently than the other. You can see here, fires every 1.7 seconds compared to every half a second. Okay, cool. And on the tag battle cruiser, yeah, see, eight heavy laser cannons that fire every half a second. And then the kilometer, how far it goes. I really like that. I really like how they show all the, that detail, how far it fires how frequently it fires, so on and so forth. I don't know what the two is, though, before the seconds. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, um, yeah, looking at that, the warship is really struggling here. Really struggling, which makes sense, because obviously this is quite a cheap ship to build, especially in Skirmish, I think. Or is the battle... Cra no, sorry, the battle carrier is at tech level four. The warship is on tech level five on Skirmish, I believe. Um, but yeah, so... 
remove uh, yeah weaker firepower worse armor compared to its more militarized siblings yeah it really shows because this ship is definitely not going to win that was a clear win for the tag battle cruiser here as well it didn't it, it it did not not have to worry about its fighters it was more focused on on dealing the necessary damage to win the battle and like i said though those heavy iron cannons are really going to do a lot of work the the luke holt warship didn't have any at all fascinating so that was a really quick win for the uh the tag battle cruiser that was not messing about amazing well there you go one loss one win so actually i might try another luke hulk variant maybe no we'll move we'll move on to the next one we'll move on to our next ship for the battle but there you go one win one loss Okay, so we're starting on our third battle, and this one I'm really interested in. We've got the Subjugator class heavy cruiser against the Tag Battle Cruiser. Now, these both have similar stats for their hull and their shields 26,200 uh, 26, on the Tag and 26,432 on the Subjugator. And as for shields, they're pretty much identical. So, yeah, we're having a very close battle here. And um, I think, wow, that's really surprising. We've just taken two hits, I think, from the Super Iron Cannons on that ship. We're probably going to get hit with a third. Um, but we're still keeping up with shield damage. Almost, almost. Um, well, the Subjugator is spawning only one fighter and one bomber. Uh, so its um, carriers and its fighter bays just pff, nothing compared to the Tag Battle Cruiser, which is spawning you know four times more than that um so we don't have to worry so much about bombers being a problem here getting hit by another super iron cannon strip some of our shields uh and i don't guys we're in the middle of a fight do you mind I have no idea there you go off you pop off you pop sorry rudely interrupted there <laughs> but wow yeah i say that but all of a sudden we're just not doing all of a sudden like our, our iron damage just stopped we were really catching up there but now, not so much. What changed? What am I... Like, once it stripped our shields, it was able to wipe our hard points so fast. So, th th this is a good thing, because we we're learning more about the Tag Battle Cruiser the more we use it, right? So, it seems like it's really effective when its shields are up, when you're not taking down the hard points. But because, as I mentioned earlier, this ship isn't covered by a lot of hard points here. Like, it's 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 quite sparse, considering its size. You know, you take a look at the, the subjugator, there's hard points all over the place on the front of the ship. But if we look in the back here of what's remaining, not so much. And even when it's at full health, there's hardly any ba uh, hard points. So, because of that, when you strip the shields, there's, you know, there's a lot of fragile hard points here that you can't afford to lose. Uh, and, it, and it seems like whilst we were doing a lot of damage at the beginning when we had all our shields up, those super iron cannons stripped them down in seconds and was able to reduce the tag battle cruiser's uh, firepower really, really fast here. So that is uh, a really interesting concept on that and just goes to show that when the super iron cannons uh, are used in an effective way against ships that really rely on their shields, it can get away with murder, <laughs> which it just did here. So didn't even break through the shields against the subjugator here. Quite surprised considering how similar the hull and shields are. But again, you know, you're looking, you're seeing these 44 light jewel turbo lasers. It's going to do a lot of damage. It's going to do a lot of damage. But there you go. So one win, two losses. Let's move on to our final fight of the video. Okay, so here we are for our final battle of the video we've got the praetor mark one battlecruiser against the tag battlecruiser very similar looking ships uh, apart from the reactor being absolutely massive on the praetor and the reactor on the uh, uh tag is just at the bottom here i think it's hard to see actually is it actually here i'm gonna be uh actually yeah no uh i there's no reactor on the bottom here i swear there was no, no, no reactor there. Interesting. But anyway, so um, we're going to start the battle now. Now, I do believe we're going to get absolutely rinsed by the Praetor. It's already got a lot more hull, a lot more shields by 10,000 more. 
Uh, the heavy quad turbo laser is just going to do a lot of damage. It's got a lot of iron damage as well. So even if we have more fighters compared to the Praetor, Praetor's only spawning three fighters. We're spawning five with one bomber. Uh, it's just, I think it's just not going to be enough. Like this, this is what we're seeing from like five heavy dual iron cannons, six medium dual iron cannons, ripping our shields apart, which we really rely on uh, with the tag battle cruiser because we don't have a lot of hard points. We need to keep them all alive to be effective. Um, and here we've only got four heavy iron cannons, not dual, singular heavy iron cannons. While, you know, the Praetor has five dual on top of six medium dual ones as well. So we certainly don't hold a candle to the Praetor in terms of iron cannon damage. And let me tell you, we hold no candle whatsoever when it comes to turbo lasers. So in every aspect of the word, albeit uh, fighters and bombers, we just do not win this fight. But what I do find interesting is that we are doing a similar amount of damage, well, more damage, uh, more so, than against the Subjugator. Because as you remember here, we actually got the Subjugator down to like one third shields in our last battle before we lost. And here we've done the same, but this is 10,000 more shields than the Subjugator. Well, sorry, 5,000. So... Why is that? And that's really down to the super iron cannons being so effective. They might eat her prayer. Praetor has tons of iron cannon damage. Don't get me wrong, but the super iron cannons. Whew, that is another beast in and itself. So. Will we be able to strip the shields? I don't think so, but it really goes to show once those shields on the tank battle cruiser are down. It's game over because uh, it really needs every single bit of firepower on it. Uh, the fighters probably help, and the bombers, because we're, we're not being chased down by uh, whatever the Praetor is spawning. So that is good news in itself, at least. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we will strip the shields. I will be thoroughly impressed if we get to strip the shields of the Praetor. I will. I, I really will. And like I said, if this ship... Um, is much cheaper to build in Thrawn's Revenge. Maybe it'll become playable in Fall of the Republic in a future update. I doubt it, but maybe um, maybe that's where its value comes from. Maybe maybe if it's not, at least not in price, at least in pop cap. Maybe. And the shields are actually gone. So this, will be a, this is an interesting part of the battle now because we can actually reduce the Praetor's damage at this point onwards. So maybe we can slow the battle down or us being destroyed down in time for us to actually see how much we can get done in terms of hull. I've got to be honest, like the Subjugator won based on its shield stripping abilities, which obviously made it very apparent of like the weaknesses of the tag battle cruiser. But I did not think we were going to get this far against the Praetor. So, buddy, tag, I'm proud of you. You may be just a demonstration ship only, but you are certainly uh, you are certainly showing us how it's done. And I've got to say, beautiful model too. Like, look at this. It's very reminiscent of the, you know, Allegiant Battle Cruiser or, or even just a standard large Star Destroyer, uh, with, you know, with how they've got the, uh, the, the, the bridge here. And the shield generators on the top. Very, very reminiscent of a, an ISD mixed with an allegiance of sorts, you know? So, yeah, very interesting. Either way, we've got two, we've only got one missile concussion left, and away we go. We only got to destroy, like, I think, three hard points on the Praetor. But nonetheless, not bad. We dealt 30,000 shields of damage there, which is really impressive. So, tag battle cruiser. You did well. I'm proud of you. I'm going to spawn in another one just as we end the video. I'm very proud of it. And I've got to say, a beautiful ship. I love these, like, I love these ships that don't have a full purpose against any faction. It's just a minor faction ship that's really impressive. You know, like the same with Thrawn's Revenge. You can't build a Bellator unless you're in a particular minor faction. The Empire can't build it. I think the Greater Malarud is the only one that can build the uh, Bellators, I think. But either way, it's those special type of battle cruisers that aren't made by a specific main faction is what makes them so interesting. 
So yeah, now now that we've got all of our shields back up and we've got all of our uh, turbo lasers re replenished, the tag is doing a lot of damage to the hull. And that's why I think the tag, this is like really demonstrating the tag, uh, tag's power. Because because it's got a lackluster of iron cannons, four heavy iron cannons is not a lot, guys. It's, it's not a lot of iron damage. But once you strip those shields down, those heavy turbo lasers and uh, those medium dual turbo lasers get to work. So really impressive. So this ship really excels once the ship, the uh, enemy ship's shields are down, which I find fascinating. And, and, and that's why the tag battle cruiser is definitely one of my favorite ships in Fallen Republic. It's a shame you can't build it in skirmish. I'd love to see a, a playable version of this at a maybe a lower cost that you can build on the hero station or something like that. That would be interesting. Uh, maybe at like tech level four. So just one before the Praetor or, or, or the uh, Sector. Yeah, but there you go. That is the Tag Battle Cruiser. Let me know what you think about this ship, guys. Have you used it in the Fleet Builder before? Have you hacked it into your Galactic Conquest? Uh, or will you do it after watching this video? Um, or do you not like the ship? Do you just think it's just not a lot of power, not a lot of shields, just not worth your time? Well, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested to hear your opinions. And of course, why not continue the conversation over on our Discord? We have loads of people that play tons of Star Wars Empire at War over there. So if you're looking to have a 1v1 in skirmish mode or have some advice on how to play your Galactic Conquest or even just talk about any ships in particular, join our Discord with the invite code in the pinned comment down below. And I'll be there as well. So say hi. You're even allowed to at me if you want. Just say hi. Uh, let me know what you think about the videos and stuff. Love interacting with you guys. But besides that, guys, I have been Charlie. You've been watching X2, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.